Hi, and welcome back to Let's Talk Forex, Alison and Chris. This week, we're talking about Fibonacci retracements. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. And if you have any questions, as always, just send them through to podcast at fxscouts.com. Thanks so much for listening, as always. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm pretty good, Alison. Uh, can't complain. Back in Portugal. Yes. Briefly, uh, off to off to Spain this afternoon. International man of mystery, like Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah, you really are. <laughs> I don't think I've ever yeah, met anyone who travels as much as you do. Yeah, I know. No, to be honest, it's pretty exhausting. Yeah. But um, but it was nice to be in London just before the weather turned terrible, and um, and uh, Portugal's been lovely. Yeah, it's been nice to be home for a few days, and and Malaga's. Well, it's going to be nice. Yes, yeah. I can't complain. What are you? How are you doing? You're right. Yeah, good. I'm good. I'm in Kenton on Sea. Um, absolutely yeah. beautiful. You know, this place is just amazing. We actually had a fantastic weekend as well. Went down to the river and to the beach, and it was just amazing. Oh, good yeah. for you. Yeah, really amazing. Yeah, thanks. Sounds yeah. good. So today we are talking about Fibonacci retracements, which is quite an interesting topic. Um, and it's a fantastic tool, and it's a very well-used tool. So I'm looking forward to chatting about it. Yeah, cool. So let's get into it. Uh, Fibonacci retracements. It's um, two very long words, 50-cent <laughs> words, my mother yeah. used to call them. <laughs> um, so Fibonacci retracements, they're, um, they're a popular, as I said, like really popular technical analysis uh, tool, and they're used uh, by traders to predict the movement of price in financial markets. And they work in pretty much all financial markets. Um, and so Fibonacci retracements and ratios, what they do particularly is they can help you identify upcoming support and resistance levels based on past price action. So in this podcast, we're going to run through what they are, uh, what benefits they can provide um, in your technical analysis, and what Fibonacci retracement levels and extensions are and how exactly to use them. Exactly. So before we jump into that, um, we want to just sort of describe what retracements are. Um, mm -hmm. It's also a bit of a, as you say, it's a 50 cent word, but um, it's quite a simple concept. So they're basically short term price corrections during an overall larger upward or downward trend. And these price corrections don't indicate a change in the direction of the larger trend. So they're basically mm -hmm. small movements um, and pullbacks uh, that occur in the same direction of the of the larger trend. As you know, the markets sort of move up and down the whole time. And there's, mm -hmm. there's sort of corrections that occur. So the main benefit of retracements is that you can enter a trade in the direction of the larger trend but you'll get it at a better price um, just before the continuation of the move. So that's basically why people trade retracements. Um, and it's a very yeah. popular trading method, of course. Absolutely. So, and why do these retracements occur? Um, so let's assume we're talking about a large upward trend uh, in the market. Uh, traders are going to buy because they assume that the market price is going to continue going up, as it often does um, in, a trending, in a trending price. As more traders notice that movement, they're going to start buying into the trend too. Um, when that market has started gaining traction and has been going up for a while, some traders are going to close their positions. Uh, they're going to close out to make a, to make a profit. Uh, and this will result in a temporary sell-off. Uh, so the market will pull back slightly, but then the upward trend uh, will be temporarily, temporarily suspended as a result. But then because the main, whatever's pushing the main, driving the main trend hasn't stopped, you're going to see that upward trend uh, continue. So you get this small correction, a retracement in the market, and then the original forces that form that trend are going to resume the activity, and then the price will continue to go upwards uh, until the trend has finally run its course and, and do a full reversal. Yeah, exactly. So um, in theory, the first thing you should do if you want to trade a retracement is find a strong upward or downward trend. And then to find a good entry point, you look to enter the trend after a retracement or pullback has occurred. And this is because you want to get a better price. So put simply, you should buy pullbacks in an uptrend and sell rallies in a downtrend. Um, and a rally is basically during a downtrend where the market, the, the price goes up slightly. 
Um, and mm-hmm. once it is retraced up to a certain level, obviously you'll, you'll have to use your discretion in deciding how far it's, it's retra- um, rallied up. Then mm-hmm. you want to, to put in a, a sell order. But, of course, um, how do you know when the market will pull back? Mm. Um, and this is basically where, where Fibonacci retracements come in. Yes, it is indeed. Very useful things. But let's. Uh, why are they called Fibonacci retracements? Well, you have to. The Fibonacci tool um, is based on mathematical relationship, and this expresses the ratio between numbers in a series. It's called the Fibonacci series or the Fibonacci sequence. Um, and the Fibonacci sequence was popularized in the Western world. It's been known and known about for thousands of years. I think all the way back to the Greeks and the Egyptians, they realized this. But it was popularized in the West by a 13th century mathematician called Leonardo Fibonacci, hence the name Fibonacci retracement. And he discovered that the relationship between numbers in a sequence, i.e. the ratio, is not just interesting on a theoretical level. It appears frequently around us. Uh, in the, the Fibonacci sequence appears in the physical world and is an integral part of balance in nature and also integral part of balance in architecture. Mm. Um, this ratio is, and we're going to use this number a lot, is 0.618. Or in the terms of retracement, when we talk about it, we're going to talk about it also as a percentage, which is 61.8%. And this is a mathematical connection between two aspects of an object. As I said, it's found all over nature. You'll see plants will grow in this ratio. You'll see weather structures will form according to this ratio. Even star systems, like the spirals in a galaxy, mm. will will are, are formed according to this ratio. It is everywhere. So, yeah, I mean, in art, in uh, the proportion of uh, of our limbs, um, encryption, uh, it's really important. It's yeah, it's kind of it's a really spooky thing, you know, but it's like um, it's kind of a built in uh, numbering system for the cosmos. Yeah. Um, and even more spookily, it also seems to have um, a very important effect in, in financial markets. Mm-hmm. Um, though there may be a more um, prosaic reason for that too, which we'll get to. But we can. But yes, uh, many traders will use the Fibonacci ratio uh, to calculate these retracements, and they'll use it as part of their forex uh, trading strategy. Yeah, I mean it's it's used. It's very popular. If you look at any technical analysis, um, very often you'll find people will talk about the the different Fibonacci retracement levels. I mean, we use it for our um, technical analysis just because it's it's so significant. So, um, if you want to, I mean, we we don't want to get into too many numbers here, but I think it is important just to give you an idea of where it comes from and and why it works the way it does. So, the Fibonacci sequence is basically calculated by adding two together two previous numbers um, to each other, and then it forms the next number. So that sounds odd. But if you start with one, uh, you'll say one plus zero is one. Then one plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. So basically, if we'll, we'll put this in, in, in our show notes so you actually have uh, a better idea of what we're talking about. But, mm-hmm. but the whole Fibonacci sequence is this very interesting sequence of adding two previous numbers together to form the next number. Um, yep. And what's significant about this pattern is that the ratio of any number to the next one in the sequence tends to be 0.618. I mean, we, we were doing this before the show just now. Uh, obviously, um, the ratio between 0 and 1 is not, and the ratio between 1 and 1, of course, won't be. But as you get further into the sequence, it becomes the 0.618 becomes more and more significant. Yeah, um, exactly. And then another interesting thing is that the ratio of any number to the two to the number two places ahead in the sequence is always 0.382. And the and the ratio of any number to the number three places ahead tends to be 0.236. So the 0.618. 0.382 and 0.236, which you won't have to remember if you're using the Fibonacci tool. They're embedded in the tool. But those three numbers are, are very, very significant um, in nature, as you say, in, in the cosmos, in, in architecture, and then um, in, in the Fibonacci tool itself. Yeah, and in forex trading, weirdly. Uh, forex very trading. important mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's also weird about this um, is dividing, if you divide these ratios, you'll also get the same number. So if you yeah. divide if you divide 0.382 by 0.618, you get 0.618. And if you divide 0.236 by 0.382, you get 0.618. Yeah. So they're incredibly interlinked, this whole sequence. 
Um, it's a fascinating thing. And as you said, like the, the fit, so the Fibonacci tool, when you, when you open it up, you're going to have these, um, you're going to have these levels, the most common three levels. Uh, they're usually expressed as a percentage, as I mentioned before. So the 0.618 will become 61.8%. Uh, 0.382 will become 38.2%. And 0.236 will become 23.6%. And these are the three, these are the three, three main levels you'll see in your Fibonacci retracement tool. Yes, and most, most traders widely accept that trends will usually retrace around these Fibonacci levels. So this is why it becomes significant in Forex trading. Mm -hmm. um, so it means that in an uptrend, a price will retrace a certain percentage of the move before continuing its long upward movements. And traders generally use these levels because they realize that there are so many other traders sitting in the sidelines, what you were mentioning before, why it's significant yeah. in Forex trading. Um, that will be seeing the same thing that they are. So they realize that other traders will also be creating buy, sell, and stop levels and take profits, of course, based on these levels. So it becomes, like most other technical analysis tools, becomes a bit of a, a self-fulfilling prophecy, um, yep. which is kind of how trading works. <laughs> to a yeah, exactly, exactly. So less spooky, maybe. Yeah. Um, and more, yeah, as you say, just self-fulfilling prophecy. Um so yeah, so how does it work exactly? So traders will wait for prices to approach these Fibonacci levels and they'll act according to their strategy. Usually you're going to look for a retracement signal on these uh, widely watched retracement levels. The most commonly used is a 61.8%, uh, that of the original gold golden ratio, as it's called. Um, so yeah, this is that's what most traders are going to hover around. They're going to sit there and wait for this to break the 61.8%. Exactly. You know, you've obviously got these tools on, on most trading platforms. You'll be able to find the Fibonacci retracement tool. And mm -hmm. to draw it, you it, it's quite simple. So in an uptrend, you're going to identify the direction of the, tr the market, uptrend, of course. Then mm -hmm. you're going to attach the Fibonacci retracement tool to the bottom of that trend and drag it up to the right to the top of that price action. And at the bottom of the trend, you'll see 100%. And at the top of the trend, you'll see zero. And when you've plotted this line, the Fibonacci tool automatically plots all the retracement levels. Um, and then you're going to basically monitor the three uh, potential support levels, which will be 0 0.236, 0 0.382, and 0 0.618. And of course, um, you know, you'll wait for them either to, uh, to approach these levels as supports, or if they've potentially broken through those levels, you might expect them to find support at the next um, retracement level. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, it's very yeah. interesting how it works it is and in a downtrend i mean it works as you'd expect just kind of the opposite so once you identified there's a downtrend you attach the retracement tool to the top drag it to the right all the way to the bottom and then you're going to monitor those three resistance levels at 0 0.236 0 0.382 and 0 0.618 um, but of course as always when we're talking about technical analysis um, it's always look for a confluence of signals yeah. so you need to have more reasons here uh, to take action. Don't fall into the trap of assuming that just because the price reached a Fibonacci level, then the market's going to retrace. So um, we always combine um, Fibonacci retracements with you want to look at you want to look at your candlestick patterns. Um, you want to look at your and other oscillators as well and other indicators. Yeah, make sure you're not just using the Fibonacci by itself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, you're going to look at support and resistance will be one of your, your major things. But interesting, you'll find the support and the resistance happens around these levels. Yeah. Um, so how do you place uh, stops and take profits? Um, well, I think this is probably also one of the main, uh, a, a very good reason for using Fibonacci that it helps you sort of define these, these stops and take profits. So once you've decided on your entry, then you have to determine your exit strategy. And of course, you've got where do you place your stop losses and where do you place your take profits? So we always suggest that you place your stop loss for the uptrend just below the retracement level or the support, uh, ag again, at one of these levels, the 0 0.236, 0 0.31, uh, 0 0.382 or the 0 0.618. <laughs> um, and, and you replace it in, um, and in the downtrend just above the retracement level or the resistance level, again, at these, these levels. Um, and then if you're looking at your take profits, many traders place their take profit levels at the various Fibonacci extensions, again, um, at the 26.3, 38.2 level, 50% level is also a significant Fibonacci level. So we didn't mm -hmm. mention that earlier, but but it is. And then you've got the 61.8% level. And the 61.8% level is probably one of the most significant retracement levels. And it's, and it's something that most traders, uh, you know, once it starts to 
to pull back or rally towards that level. Uh, traders seriously take notice. Um, and because these obviously correspond to the retracement levels, it, it makes it very simple to find where to put your, your stop losses or, or take profits. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's, um, it's a complicated name for a relatively simple tool to use yeah. um, and really popular, very common. And as you said, Alison, because so many traders use it, uh, you'll find a lot of people, you'll find that it's self-fulfilling prophecy. prophecy. Yeah. So a very helpful uh, indicator to use as well. Yeah, so to summarize, uh, short-term price retracement. Um, a retracement is a short-term price correction in an overall trend. Fibonacci retracements allow you to enter the trade in the, in the overall direction of the trend, but at a better price mm -hmm. by helping you identify these retracements. And you want to buy pullbacks in an uptrend, and you want to buy rallies in a downtrend, and, and the Fibonacci will, will help you do this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I hope that's um, been educational for you. Let's said we'll we'll uh, put links in the show notes. You did a video recently on this, I think, Alison. Yeah. So it might be a, might be helpful yes. for people to see that something more visual. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so we'll pop you. that in the show notes. Yeah, we'll we'll pop yeah. that in the show notes so you can just have a look at that. Cool. Um, and um, and next week we're talking about how to trade with a full time job. Yeah. Well, we battled with it, but I know a lot of other um, yeah. traders battle big time with it. So. Yeah. So we're going to give you a few tips and tricks on how to get that potentially right. Cool. cool. Super. Well, I look forward to speaking to you then, Alison. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>